All right. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I'd clicked on my <laughs> camera. My bad. Oh, look, little. Here's a... I never did learn that. Here's a church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors and look at the people. That's probably should start this video over. Oh, well. I'm too lazy to start over. Uh, here's where we're at. Unit 6.3 in elastic collisions. In other words, we're to the part of physics where things run into each other. It could be something as simple as two balls thrown at each other. Uh, it might be something thrown at something trying to get away from it, and they run into each other because this one's traveling faster. Or something could be thrown at something sitting still. <laughs> There's two types of situations, though. One situation, these two objects could be thrown at each other, and they hit and bounce off. They could be thrown, and they hit in such a way that this one knocks the other one backwards, and they both go that way. This case, now this one's probably going to hit and bump everything this way. And in this case, this one could hit, might even bounce off. Whatever happens, this one should go that way, unless it's just like a huge singularity type of mass here. But anyway, there is a chance that could hit and bounce off. But chances are this could hit, could stop, and then that one goes. That's that. This is kind of like that perfect billiard shot where this ball is hit hits this one and that one moves and then the first one comes to a rest. But anyway, what we're looking at here is an inelastic collision. What happens when these two objects hit and let's say these smack into each other. In other words, two train cars run into each other and couple together. So in other words, maybe it's two balls of mud they're thrown at each other and the two balls hit and go and become a single ball of mud. But anyway, so an inelastic and an inelastic problem is also known as a hit and stick question. Now, unlike where sometimes these things hit and bounce off, usually in a hit, hit and stick, uh, some energy is lost. And if you're wondering why or how does energy get lost, ooh, why on the energy? If you're wondering how does the energy get lost, it's because think about two balls of mud hitting each other. Oh, think about two cars. A very common question in these is a car sitting at rest or something. I mean, this is, this is like your perfect test question. And another car comes from behind and runs into it, and in the wreck, they all get tied together. Well, you've got to think. Let's say that this car's got 2,000 joules of energy. After these two hit and come together, you may find out that the two combined cars in the big wreck over here, they might only have 500 joules of energy. So you're wondering, where did this energy go? Well, when two things hit and collide, what happens is you lose some of that energy due to the deformation of these two. Ooh, next video, i got to play with my happy sad balls. But anyway, we'll make a video on the happy sad balls. We'll call it anyway. We'll get into that. So, I'll stop talking about balls now. Dang, what is it? That's that's a bad... Never mind. i got to shut up. This is going on YouTube. But anyway, you can look in this situation and see you're losing 1,500 joules of energy to the environment. Ooh, entropy. Wait, that's chapter 12. I'm feeling random today. Oh, well, too much caffeine. So, let's take a look at what makes a hit-and-stick problem a hit-and-stick. Well, obviously, it's pretty obvious. Obviously, it's pretty obvious. Wow, this, this video stinks so far. But anyway, all right. So what is a hit and stick? A hit and stick is when you've got two objects, M1, V1 initial, plus M2, V2 initial, equals the two objects hit and become one mass. So in other words, they end up M1, M2. In other words, you have two combined masses and only a single velocity because the two objects come together. Now, sometimes you'll work a problem. These two objects hit, and they don't go anywhere. Well, if that's the case, then that's zero, and this whole side becomes a zero, and that's where your problem becomes. Uh, there's a famous test question I've used before where Popeye and Bluto run at each other and stop. Well, that would make all this zero, so it's just MV plus MV equals zero in these problems. So... Let's kind of get into doing a couple of these. Right off the bat, first problem we're going to work is example E. An 1800 kilogram luxury sedan is stopped at a traffic light. It is struck from the rear by a compact car with a mass of 900 kilograms. 
Wait a second. It's uh, two cars hitting together. So I'm not going to draw two cars. I'm going to draw two balls again. It's the theme of the chapter. So here's the first car. And I believe it is stopped. Yes. So we've got, I'm going to call it M1, and that's equal to 1,800 kilograms. And it's just sitting at a red light. So we're going to say that its velocity, velocity 1 initial, is zero. It's not going anywhere. Now coming up from behind it is a smaller car. That car, we'll call it M2. It's got a mass of 900 kilograms. And the problem goes on to say that that car is moving at 20 meters per second. I should really put a little positive in front of that 20 and make that stand out. But anyway, so here's our situation. And the problem wants to know, after these two hit, they, combi they become combined and then run off into the sunset. More like run off to your nearest insurance agent. But anyway, they move off. So the problem wants to know, what is this single velocity final since these two objects become one? Well, here's our equation. There's our, and I should really put a box around that because that's an important equation. You need to memorize that. So let's apply this equation to this problem. And we'll just go ahead and work it. M1 is 1800 times V1, which is zero. Well, I guess we could have completely left that out, but anyway. So plus, M2 is 900 times positive 20, and that's going to be equal to 9, 1,800 and 900, but I don't guess the order matters, 1,800 and 900 the final, the combined masses of the two objects over here. So the 1,800 times 0, we can rule that out. We got 900 times 20, so that's going to be 18 with three zeros equals 900 plus uh, 1800 so we've got 2700 there VF now a little division 1800 which it's going to be 0 0.667 18,000 divided by 27,000 0.66666667 so anyway 0.67 meters per second. So that, there is our velocity final in this problem. Now, we've kind of got an idea of what's going on. Could we find out more information here? Yeah, we could find out more information. Uh, matter of fact, even though the problem doesn't ask for it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, I want to go ahead and do something. Could y'all find the energies? In other words, could you find the kinetic energy of the second car initially. Well, how could you find that kinetic energy? Oh, well, one half mv squared. Take your kinetic energy equation. What about this object? What's the kinetic energy of the first object initially? Well, the first object's kinetic energy is a zero. It was sitting still. So let's do something on another sheet of paper here. I'm moving through lots of paper on these videos. What would be the kinetic energy of object one initial? Well, that's zero. So what's the kinetic energy of the second car, the smaller car? Well, that would be one-half times 900 times 20 square. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, half of 900 times uh, 20 square, which would be 400. And that comes out to 180,000 joules. Now, they always say energy is not created or destroyed. So your total energy pre-crash pre is 0 and 180,000. That's all your energy combined before the crash. After the crash, kinetic energy final. And you got to think this kinetic energy now includes objects 1 and 2. They're both stuck together. So 1 half times 2700 for their combined masses times the final velocity was only 0.67 so times 0.67 square so let's see what we get in this half times 2700 times 0.67 square equals 606 look at this you had pre-crash 
180,000 joules of energy. 180, 1, 2, 3, minus 606. You've lost. Look at this. You've lost now 179,394 joules of energy. Where did that energy go? Well, it's gone to the environment. It uh, went to the deformation of the two vehicles. So, and then which later become heat, which escape to the atmosphere and thus more entropy in the universe. So if we were doing an entropy problem, we would say that delta S is equal to Q over T. If we knew that energy over the temperature at this location, we would know our change in entropy in this problem. Anyway, so that gives us a little bit of idea here. Let's do another problem. That one didn't even ask the energy, but hey, guess what? That's a very common question to be asked. Hint, hint. Love that question. Second is, oh, two balls of mud collide. Perfect in a head-on collision. So let's draw our two balls of mud. So here's one ball of mud. Here's the other ball of mud. Now I know, let's see, they're in a head-on collision. So we've got two balls of mud moving at each other. I'm going to say M1, M2. And let's say it says that M1 is 0.5 kilograms. So this one's 0.5 kgs. M2 is 0.25 kgs. Oh, those jerks. I love when the problem has matching masses because... I don't know if you paid attention to your equation, but if all your masses are equal, then you can cancel all the masses out of the problem. So that's always nice. And then let's see. We've got a velocity 1 initial, and it says in the problem that it is positive. It even puts that positive in there, positive 4. And it says that velocity 2 initial is it's got to be a negative because it's moving towards the left is negative 3 meters per second. Now I'm going to leave some room right under this because it wants us to do some energy calculations. So this problem wants us to find the combined final velocity. Well, we just need our equation. So I'm going to skip a little space. M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 plus M2 VF because this is a hit and stick situation, an inelastic problem. And we can just go and put in some numbers in here. This is going to be 0.5 times 4 plus 0.25 times negative 3 equals 0.5 plus 0.25, which most of us would probably go ahead and add up in our head. But anyway, we'll leave that down here. Let's start going through and kind of working this problem out a little bit here. So let's go ahead. Oh, and this, let me bring this up to a point here. I haven't got to say this. These problems being nothing but MV, 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 MV aren't anything more than just a proportion, which means the glorious, beautiful thing about these problems is this. If you're just using the MV equations, you can use whatever unit you want. If you want to use centimeters per second, go for it. Miles per hour, go for it. Instead of mass, if you want to cheat and say two 1,300 kilogram cars run into each other, use pounds for M. No, it's not right, but it will be right because your units cancel out in these problems. So it's nothing more than proportion. So don't worry about your units in these. Unless you're going to do like the one-half MV squared, don't worry about your units. So here, we've got half of four, so that's two, plus, oh, let's go ahead and get the calculator out. 0 0.25 times three, 0 0.75, please do not make fun of me for just doing that in the calculator. I feel terrible about it. Oh, equals, here, you want to see some math? Get this, son, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.75 VF. That just happened. So over here, now we've got 2.75 equals 0.75 VF. And now let's come back in here. Let's start estimating. Let's say the answer is 4. I don't know. 2.75 divided by 0.75. 3.66. Ah, dang it. 
So there is the first answer to this question. That's the final velocity of the two combined balls of mud. Now, it also says find how much energy was lost in this. Well, let's do something. The kinetic energy of the first one initial would be equal to one half of one half times four square. The kinetic energy of the second object initially would be one half of 0.25 times negative three square, thus the negative doesn't matter. This is, remember, energy is a scalar. There's no direction. So we've got half times a half times four square, 16, which is, oh my goodness, four. Again, I should have done it in my head. Thank you, do not bring it up. Equals 0.5 times 0.25 times three square equals 1.1 or 1.13, 1.1 joules. So our total energy before crash, our total initial energy is 5.1 joules. This is my initial. Initial. My initial energy is 5.1. So how much energy is there post-crash? Well, post-crash, crash, crash, the kinetic energy, final would be one half their combined masses, which is 0.75, both masses together, times final velocity squared. By the way, notice how this come out positive. I hope you notice there's significance to that. When these two objects hit, they combine and both go towards the right. That's because this object was heavier and, excuse me, more massive and with a greater velocity. But anyway, times 3.67 squared. Well, let's see what kind of damage we got here. 0.5 times 0.75 times 3.67 squared. 5.05 joules. So this is our final energy. So that's... So how much energy was lost? in this problem. We started out with 5.1, we ended up with 5.05. .05. Well, unlike our last question, we only lost 0 .05 joules of energy in this collision, in this problem. Uh, I'd have to say, if I was asking you a test question, I would ask one of these two examples. As a matter of fact, I would go back, rework those on your own. Those are like the perfect types of problems. I'm going to come back and do one more problem in a different video. I'm going to do what's known as the ballistic pendulum problem. That's a very common hit and stick. It's actually a wonderful little problem. But anyway, and another look for, I'll call that one like part two, since this is 18 minutes of me talking already. I'll call it part two of this chapter with a ballistic pendulum added into it, which I love a ballistic pendulum. You have a good day. And thank you, I uh, love you, and uh, if you want to, we can, I don't know, I'm just talking trash. Bye, y'all.